What's up, y'all? And happy Friday, coincidentally. Uh, as many of you know, I've been working in the back room on Naki Tama Plaza, and I got to kind of my stash of rim locks and Jimmy Proof locks and rim latches. So I figured I'd do a video on it because I hadn't really talked about them in depth. And we're going to go over Jimmy Proof, Night Latch, Night Latch, Deadbolt, uh, and all different brands and styles that were made over the years because even though you don't see these a lot, every so often you will run up on them, especially if you live in an area where there's older homes. You don't really see these on houses past like like mid 80s and earlier or later, you know, after the 80s, this was kind of not really done a whole lot just because of the style of construction uh, that was used. And then regular deadbolts came out and then power tools came out. So it made it easier to install regular locks on doors instead of these. These traditionally were always easier to install on doors because Back in the day when you didn't have 18, 36 volt power tools, you know, battery powered tools, you had to rely on a bit and a brace to put in stuff. And that is what made these kind of popular to put in because you only had to drill like an inch and a quarter hole versus the big two and an eighth inch hole that you have to do nowadays, which of course is not a big deal for us. But we're going to talk about the, uh, the Jimmy Proof and the Rim and the Yale and the Elko and all that. So let's get started. All right. So no matter which one we're talking about, we are going to start with Jimmy's least favorite one. But no matter which one we're talking about, even the fancier ones, they all kind of work the same way. They, they're on the same premise. They, they do pretty much the same thing, just slightly different styles of it. Basically, you have a cylinder with a key that goes in through the outside, typically has a ring around it like this. All right, and goes through the door and interacts with whatever mechanism we have here. Uh, it's held on the inside of the door with screws and a plate like this. We'll go ahead and get this open because we're going to need it here in a minute. So here's our front ring, right? Now well, that covers up the hole. Most of these are an inch and a quarter hole. So what this does is give you just a little leeway. Not really leeway, but it just... Uh, I don't know how to describe that because you really don't have a whole lot of leeway because if it's off even a little bit, uh, the tailpiece will not go straight. You want it going straight through the door, but they're held in with a little plate that looks like this. There's many different versions of this plate. This particular one is a fast screw style, which I can't stand anything like this because it just lets it slip off. There we go. Drop that. Anyway, tighten the screw down, holds it on the door just like that. And this extends off the inside of the door and intersects with a slotted thing, no matter what kind, either plus or just straight across, even the Jimmy Proof, they all do the same thing as they go into the lock itself. And what happens is when you turn the key, just like this, all right, this particular one, the Jimmy Proof, it turns a mechanism on the inside of the plate like that, that throws a plunger down and then it lifts up. This is actually not the right one. There you go, lock. This doesn't fit this lock, but you can see how it works. And you turn it again and it pushes this out of the way and allows it to go to the unlock position. Everything up here works exactly the same way with just slight modifications based on design. Uh, and uh, one thing I'll go ahead and note before I forget about it. There are, the reason why these are scored like this is so you can break it off to length. What happens is if the post number one, it won't go very far at all. But number two, if it's too long and you try to use it on certain locks, what happens, ooh, we gotta pull the key out to get this to turn. All right, what happens there, if it's too long, is it will interfere with the actual mechanism and it won't turn. So it does, it does have to be cut or broken. You can cut it with a pair of side cutters or take two pairs of pliers and break it uh, because it doesn't have to extend into this very much. So in other words, when it's on the door, sticking out the inside of the door, it's only gonna be needing to stick out about that much. You know, two or three. Uh, 
and always while you're breaking it do it in stages you don't want to do it too short otherwise it won't go in or it'll be just barely catching and that'll tear up this so anyway that's the premise of everything and we'll just go over each and every one of them pretty quick back in the days of the jimmy proof uh, world there was a lot of when it when they started coming on scene of course there's a bunch of different manufacturers out there this was an ideal security and this one looks really interesting uh, compared to just your basic uh, this is a double-sided version which of course is against fire code most of the time but uh, a lot of people i've seen use these on gates as well with uh, tamper screws to keep somebody from just unscrewing it this would be a good option for an outdoor gate that was not that didn't fall under a fire code issue of course uh, but with the Jimmy Proof, they all literally just go up and down and intersect with uh, the strike plate, which I don't have the strike plate for this one out here, so we'll just use this instead. Now, this one's a little bit fancier. You're not going to find this anywhere. Uh, this company's been a long time. This one is actually an automatic one. So this is the plate that would go, you know, between, if we were talking about that one, right? That's how it closes on the door boom just like that now you see this doesn't have that little notch again this is a super old antique and you're not going to find anything like this nowadays and uh, when you close the door right just like this comes in and boom it automatically locks it so on this particular one the little latch right here keeps this from working it basically turns it off so in in this position when you close the door that wouldn't accidentally block you out of the door as you closed it behind you so that's a little kind of anti lockout feature to keep yourself from uh, getting locked out of the door which is another common feature on the spring latches when we go look at that that is the basis of a jimmy proof devil no matter what version you have there were a bunch of them this is a La Font, made in Brazil. And uh, also I will note while I'm here because it uh, kind of goes along with another few of these, you'll occasionally see this little tab on the back. What that is, if you flip it over, as you're putting it in, what that does is it blocks the tailpiece from coming in. So if someone were to say drill this and yank it out from the outside of the door trying to bypass it, as they yank it out, it seals off you being able to reach in with a pair of flyer or a screwdriver and just turn that with a flathead instead of that so that's what that thing is uh pretty uncommon for you to see a break in like that but it's a good security feature for sure uh back in the day there were a bunch of manufacturers like i said some better than others we're going to talk about this in a whole separate video so make sure and hit that like button if you want to see the video on this one and uh, we're going to talk about this plastic core oh plastic core by taylor um, but typically there are again different cylinders that come with all of these locks almost everything is a standard footprint in other words all these plates whether they have a bigger tab on it like this one are pretty much the same screw layout except for and of course they're made you know different ways this is an old antique bald one this is a yale still not designed like this still but it's a style of a current production they kind of make them all the same they always have and then the solid body you know instead of the hollowed out like that with this plastic core as we'll talk about in that other video it was one of the only ones that used a, a wonky hole pattern right so it had to have its own plate which is just as ridiculous as the plastic core all right then we're going to move on from the jimmy proof to the dead bolts and the night latches or the night latch dead bolts whatever you want to call it these are actually pretty commonly found more so than the jimmy proof but the one thing about jimmy proof is if your soil settles in an area like ours does if that doesn't line up you know there's some give but you know we have doors that move up and down all the time and what will happen is boom you can't close you can't even close the door uh, these were great for installation back in the day especially when we didn't have 18 volt and 20 volt and 36 volt drills 
people were having to use a hand drill because all you had to do is drill an inch and a quarter hole. But again, the only problem with it is, and as I move to the back, I'll show you, putting this, you have to excavate on different styles, like this night latch version right here. You have to excavate a large amount of trim on the inside of the door to make this sit flush. So that's these are easy to install for the door side, but for the jam side or for the strike area, it's a permanent deal because you're cutting into the trim off in it on newer houses, especially, and that's why you don't see these on newer houses, is because you have to cut out this big rectangular section of the trim. And once that's done, it's game over. That's the only thing that'll ever go there again. But going back to the night latches and the deadbolts, one of the most common one, one of the best ones on the market and still made is the Yale uh, 112 and a quarter. Also, I've done a video on this. I'll post a link up here uh, to let you look at the full video on this guy. But it is huge bolt compared to your typical, typical thing there. Uh, and it uh, often you'd see them double cylinder, which again is fire code, but they do have a single cylinder version. If you were going to replace a Yale, if you have this on your door, and you think to yourself, I should just buy that $20 one on Amazon that I saw instead of this, uh, just don't do it. Yale has their own little special footprint, so you're going to have a load, of, you're going to be able to see where the Yale was. These are way more expensive than this, but if for some reason you need to replace this, and almost always it's because this plate is wallowed out. Ask me how I know that. Wallowed out plate that almost always causes a lot of slop in the lock. Uh, but otherwise, these things do last for a really, really long time. So when we move on to the dead latches and the dead bolt latches, there are a few different ways they work. This is just a standard dead bolt flip, flip just like you would have on the door. You notice this is three screw compared to uh, four screw locks like uh, like these, All right? They're typically the the night latches always used three screw three screw even going back to the old Corbin days. Uh, and again, those are antique. These you find on garages if you've got an older garage. This is a dead bolt, but watch this. Okay, that way it's spring number one. It's a spring loaded dead bolt. Number two. And click you hear it catch so what happens there is if you are on the outside of your garage and you turn your key 300 or however many degrees it'll open it right but if you're inside your garage and you want to open it, you know not not let it lock automatically you've got that hold back feature very similar to the hold back feature that was built in into many of the dead latches inside the door you want to open the door you pull uh, or if you want to hold it open, you just, on this one, you turn it the rest of the way. On these, you have this little mechanism that you slid up to hold the latch back. And that kept you from locking yourself out. Uh, now, also, one more thing on spring latches. You will see mostly this, or dead night latches, whatever you want to call it. And what this does is close the door, just like that, boom, and it catches in there, right? Uh, those could be jimmied, which is why uh, probably they came up with those, but somehow getting a tool in there and just pushing the latch down. There were a few manufacturers like Yale that was like, I've got you back on that. I'm going to put in a dead latch. But in practical theory, this never really worked that great, again, because of shifting. It would still fully fall into some if it wasn't just right see how much i mean it's pretty small and it's right there next to the main bolt it was very unlikely that those uh nowadays would still be actually secure against jimmying and finally we have the fancy guys up here we have the baldwin guys now a lot of people want these on their house for some odd reason we've got some we've got some issues going on in that one uh, you will see this a lot on the 70s and 80s mansions or whatever you want to call them. Uh, if you Google that, you will see that these things are 800 plus dollars. They go up. This is kind of 
the average size. There are much bigger ones that are 2000 and something dollars for entry function. Entry function being, uh, you have the key on the inside so you can lock it with the key. And all these Baldwin keys were the same, solid brass, big heavy key. And uh, that, that was what people like to have on the inside of their door. Uh, the knob used a spindle that went all the way through the door and just sat on it. Typically it was these little tiny small knobs. I'll show you the difference between what is commonly seen on those versus say a wiser knob. See the, hey Jason, what's up? Hey! Uh, see, the, see the difference, that's just a standard Troy wiser. You can see the difference. And now, of course, this is solid brass, so this, this weighs more than the whole lock itself. On the outside of the door, the cylinder typically went through this little swing trim right here, and that was attached to the outside of the door. And then you have your ball one cylinder, just like that. All right, just gave it a lot prettier look, and also would kind of conceal the cylinder itself. To protect weather protection maybe is what they were thinking but honestly it didn't do a whole lot and honestly most of the time this gets broken off and lost not broken just unscrewed or you know gets lost so that's how that is done the knob goes through the door on a spindle and then it usually has this trim on the inside of the door and the spindle goes through that which activates the latch there's your key and then you have the option not on this one yep yeah, right here this is where the cylinder tailpiece went into right, and the actual back of the area where the key is so 360 degrees locks unlocks so uh, that is it I think I pretty much covered everything on rim dead latches night latches rim locks one of the common ones that locksmiths will, you know, as a locksmith, this is pretty much, besides the Yale, which Yale makes all these versions, not all these versions, but they make this, they make the thumb turn version, they make a night lock or a dead lock, and then they make a night latch version. And, uh, which by the way, aren't as big and sturdy as that. And that's these part numbers right here. These are the two, I think, Jimmy proof numbers. This is the Ilco versions, which, by far are going to be the uglier the cheaper made even though they are ilco they're decent and you you might find these in you know home depot and all that and basically the quality gets worse and worse when you're paying 20 something dollars for a whole kit you're not going to get a whole lot of quality like these hundred dollar guys over here trust me big difference in quality and uh then that's that that ugly brown you gotta love the ugly brown right now, I will say, because everybody's going to be like, oh, you can order from this website and get a good quality. Uh, there's there's dozens of uh, reproduction stuff, you know, things made out there, uh, restoration hardware type things that are pretty and ornate. Yeah, you can go find stuff like that. I can't attest to the quality of each and every one of them, uh, other than the fact that they are more focused on getting away from this ugly brown color to something that actually looks uh, decent. So anyway, that's it on the rim, dead latches, night latches, night locks, Jimmy Proof locks, oddball Jimmy Proof locks, and Baldwin rim locks. We are definitely going to do another direct video on this Taylor plastic core because it was kind of an unusual fella. And you don't really see a lot of these anymore because they're, they're, they're dead. Dead. D-E-D. -E so uh, the one thing I didn't mention was the strike plate, how it has to be attached to the jam compared to like a regular strike plate there this guy you know it, it, see how it's sitting on the trim like that so that's not good you have to cut out on this particular door it's it wouldn't be as bad but you still do have to cut out a section of this trim for it to sit like that so uh, once you do that with a door or a jam it's it's pretty permanent so you do have to just be aware of that and uh, anyway, that was it. If you have any other questions or comments on night latches, dead latches, dead bolt locks, Jimmy proof locks, ask Jimmy because I can't teach you any more than I already have. So catch y'all next video.